In the past, I've looked at some very minimal wallpaper settings, but today we're looking at an application that I would say is on the complete opposite side of the spectrum. This is an application called Super Paper, which has a very, very niche use case. Now, you can go and use it for setting just a wallpaper regularly, but if you just want to do that, there are much better applications you could be using. What this is really good at is setting a wallpaper that spans across multiple desktops. So one of the issues you get when you're doing that is if you have monitors that are of different sizes or different brands, they're probably going to have different bezel sizes. And obviously if they're different physical sizes, one's like a 24 inch and the other's a 27 inch, then the pixel density is also going to be very different as well. So Super Paper basically takes all of that information and then resizes the monitor so that when you have one section on one monitor and another section on another monitor, even though the monitors are completely different sizes, the images still line up perfectly. On my system, I have three monitors. So what it's gonna do is try to span the image across all three of them. And we can see an example of that right here. Now, what we're on right now is advanced mode and really advanced spanning mode is the only mode you should ever actually use with this application because we also have this simple spanning mode, but this is what basically every other wallpaper setter actually does. All it's gonna take into account is the resolution of the monitor. It'll cut out a section that matches that resolution and then try to line them up. And that's all it's going to do. But in advanced spanning mode, on the right hand side here, we have one that says it's 32 inches. That's not actually correct. My TV is kind of reporting it's the wrong size. It's actually 55 inches, but we can actually go and manually change that. My main monitor is 27 inches and the cutout it's got for that is a little bit smaller. And then my third monitor is 21.5 and it's using an even smaller cutout for that. And the reason why the cutouts are smaller so the images can actually line up with the different pixel densities. And then the final spanning mode isn't a spanning mode. It's just going to let you set separate images for each of the monitors. And if you're gonna use that, just don't bother with this application. While we're here, let's just go and fix the size for the TV. So if we go into the override detected sizes here, we can go and actually set the sizes manually. Let's set this one to, I believe it's 55 inches. I could be incorrect about that, but that I'm pretty sure is correct. And if we go to apply now, now it should actually go and set the wallpaper with those sizes in mind. If you notice that while you're doing anything in this application, it just suddenly changes your wallpaper, that's because by default it has a slideshow enabled, and that is enabled over on the left-hand side here. So if we want to disable that, all we do is just click on this button here, or we can go and change the delay. So right now it's just set to two minutes. We can go and increase that as much as we want, or we can also go and change the slideshow order. So by default, it's set to shuffle, but you could also set it to alphabetical as well. Now the images that are actually in the slideshow are the ones that are listed in here. And this part is probably the weirdest part of the application because they decided that instead of just, you know, using the GTK picker and then just populating the list like that, they decided to basically re-implement the GTK picker for seemingly no reason. And it doesn't actually work properly. It always starts you in the root directory regardless of which user you're logged in with, which I don't really understand why. Because if you're logged in as a non-privileged user, you're never going to be selecting anything in the root. But whatever, that's just how they decided to do it. Also, if you go and actually select an image, you can't just go and click on the image to go and add it into this list. What you have to do is go to add source. And you also can't add multiple images at once. You have to go and click through them one by one, adding them individually. I would really, really suggest for the developers of this application to just scrap this interface and just use the GTK file picker because it will just work so much better than this nonsense. But once we've done that, all we do is just click OK and we'll add them all into the list. Now, I did mention bezels earlier. So if you want to go and set the bezel sizes, all you do is go over to the adjust bezel sizes here, click on configure, and we'll show you all of these little icons here. So these aren't just the bezel sizes between the two monitors. It will also include the gap as well. So go and grab a ruler or something, or if they're really far apart, I guess a tape measure, and go and click on the button. And this is in millimeters. So I believe that my left-hand monitor and my middle monitor are about six or seven millimeters apart. I can't remember the exact number, but we'll go with six. And once we apply that, it's gonna have a little bit more of a gap between the two spanning images. So it will actually cut off this bit in between and then show just this section on that monitor. So if we go and apply this now, it will be a slightly different view of the wallpaper. The other thing you notice is that all of the monitors are centered, which probably isn't how your monitors are gonna be placed in real life. One of them is probably gonna be like maybe higher than the other. Then there'll be one that's like way lower. 
but it sort of depends on what monitors you're actually using. So if we go into the positions here, this will actually let us adjust where they're placed relative to each other. So this monitor on my left hand side here, this one is slightly above this one, but not too far above. And then this one I would say is probably closer to here, but it's also placed behind the monitor. So I can't exactly do a proper placement for this one. So let's just go and save this now. And as we can see, it's actually changed what part of the image is going to be shown on each of the monitors. And if you've done that right, it's going to look like the image actually connects between the two monitors rather than just being two different segments of the same image. It's really hard to show that it's working in OBS, so I'll just leave a link to it working down below. Now, I can't think of a reason why you would need to do this, but if you need to set some manual offsets along with the positions, you can go and do that with this button right here, and then you can do it for each of your monitors. Now, my suggestion is to go and do your offsets in something like X-Render instead, because that's going to be affecting basically all your applications rather than just your wallpaper. But if you want to just do it for your wallpaper for whatever reason, it is an option as well. I mentioned the image paths being a weird part of this application, but it kind of gets worse. So if we go into the separate image for every display, it's going to show you this prompt saying that it can't actually bring the image paths over, which is kind of fine, but you might assume that, okay, now if we want to add some images, we can just add, say, a bunch of images and then assign the monitors we want to add them to afterwards. But it doesn't actually work like that. What we actually have to do is go and add them in individually. So let's say that we want to add some wallpapers to this display right here. So display zero. So if we go and add that there, as we can see, it's just assigned to display zero. And if you want to have it on display one as well, then you have to once again go and add that. And then on display two, add that again. And you have to do this for every single one of the wallpapers rather than just grouping them together, which I feel like would make much, much more sense. Even if they weren't grouped together, if we could at least use the GTK file picker, it would be much, much easier to use. Now, once you've everything set up the way you like it, make sure that you go and save it as a profile because if you don't, the next time you go and reload the application, it's basically going to assume that you've never opened it up before and have none of your settings saved. So all we have to do to do that is go and give it a name. So let's just call this one test. And if you have multiple profiles, I would recommend just either disabling the hotkey to switch to the profile or going and setting a different one because otherwise, as we're going to see here, it's going to complain because we already have a profile that has the same hotkey to switch to it. I don't really know why you'd want a hotkey to switch between the profiles, but just keep that in mind. Now, there is one feature that I didn't show you yet, and that's because I feel like it's kind of pointless and I can't think of a single person who would ever actually want to use it. And that is the perspective setting. So normally when you set a wallpaper on your computer, it doesn't take into account how far away from the monitor you are or what angle you're going to be seeing it from. But if you want to go and do that and basically distort the image so that it should look closer to how it would really look if that scene was actually there, go into the perspective here and you can go and basically adjust the swivel and how far away from the monitor you are and the tilt and things like that. As I said, I don't know why you'd want to do this. I feel like that would just ruin any image, but it is a thing you could do. I think the only reason why you would ever want to actually do this is if one of your monitors is running in a vertical mode. Anything besides that, I feel like would be really weird. Now, this isn't the sort of wallpaper setup I would ever want to use personally because I'm the sort of person who likes to have just one picture and then have it individually on each of my monitors. I don't like having different images. I don't like spanning images. I'm a very boring person, but I guess there's some of you guys who just like to have colored wallpapers and that's all. So maybe I'm not as boring as you guys are. But if you are the sort of person who does like to have spanning images, this might definitely be something you want to check out. Now, there is a CLI interface for this as well. The reason why I didn't mention this earlier is because when it comes to, you know, modifying where monitors are placed like this, I feel like it makes more sense to do it graphically. But if you want to see those options, just go and run superpaper-h, and there you go. Basically, it lets you do everything can be done inside of the regular application, but it's just going to be far more fiddly to work with. Since this is a Python package, you can go and install it with pip, or if you're on Arch Linux, you can also install it from the AUR. So I think that's going to be pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Michael, Andre, Nathan, David, Monster, Will, Chico, Bento, Joseph, Mitchell, Peter, the Tony, Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to support my work, there's some links down below to my Patreon, Subscribestar, LibrePay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, 
tech over t available basically anywhere and then this channel is available on odyssey library and bitshoot if you want to watch it on a platform that isn't youtube so i think that's going to be pretty much everything for me and i'm out